Okay, folks, let's talk about ED pathway. ED pathway is known as, you know, Entner Dowdrop pathway. This is the short form of, sorry, let me change the color here. Entner, Entner Dowdrop. Do, Dorof pathway. Okay, this pathway was reported in 1952 by Michael Dodorov and uh, Nathan Entner. According to their names, the pathway give their name. Okay, so actually, this Entner Dodorov pathway describes an alternative series of reactions that catalyze glucose to pyruvate using a set of enzymes that are generally not used in either glycolysis or in the pentose phosphate pathway. That makes this pathway a little bit unique because this pathway involves unique enzymes, unique enzymes that are not used in either glycolysis or pentose phosphate pathway, right? So let's talk about this pathway in more details. Usually eukaryotes don't bother about ED pathway because they have all the glycolysis, Krebs cycle, pentose phosphate pathway going on inside. Actually this type of pathway was reported in bacteria. For example, Pseudomonas, Azotobacter, Rhizobium, Agrobacterium, Inescherichia coli, Enterococcus faecalis. Uh, we've seen this ED pathway to work. Actually uh, this pathway have some common regions with the pathway of glycolysis, but uh, it involves certain important and different kinds of enzymes. Now in this video, we will be not talking about the different name of the enzymes that are involved in this pathway. Rather, we will be talking about uh, the different stages of this pathway. For example, it, it starts with glucose, start with glucose because you know like other glycolytic pathways, start with glucose and definitely it should end in pyruvate. So from glucose, what they produce here is glucose 6-phosphate, glucose 6-phosphate just like the normal reaction of glycolysis. And in this case also like, like the reaction of glycolysis, they, they require ATP, right? They require ATP because the phosphate is added uh, to the glucose to convert it into glucose 6-phosphate. Then from glucose 6-phosphate, it is transferred it is converted into a new intermediate that is called 6-phosphate glucono, glucono delta lactone. Okay, 6-phosphate glucono delta lactone. Now, in this case, you can simply think about it 6 phosphoglucono lactone, whatever. Now, this thing is important because this is a unique intermediate which is generally not found in glycolytic metabolic pathway. Now during this process they require NADP and they reduce NADP into NADPH. Okay. So after this production of 6-phosphogluconolactone, water is required and after the water addition they convert this 6-phosphogluconolactone into 6-phosphogluconate, 6-phosphogluconate and this 6-phosphogluconate is very important intermediate because in the very first stage of conversion from 6-phosphogluconolactone, they require water to convert it and the second stage, water molecule releases, it is released from 6-phosphogluconolactone and they rearrange itself to convert it into phosphogluconate or phosphogluconate aldolase that is also termed as KDPG, KDPG and this KDPG is the most important intermediate of entner dowdrop pathway. This is called as a phosphogluconate aldolase. It has a huge chemical name, I am not going to talk about that but just think it as a phosphogluconate aldolase. So once this situation occurs, from the KDPG, they can choose two different pathways. There is a simple pathway of converting direct pyruvate from KDPG, but uh, the exact mechanism is not very clear till now. But the other pathway is to convert this KDPG into glyceraldehyde phosphate or GAP, 
we all know that glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate now once the gap is produced you know gap is a very common intermediate in glycolysis so once we produce the gap rest of the process just follow normal glycolysis scheme for example from the gap they require nad right and what they will produce here they will produce 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate bpg from 1 3 bpg they will produce 3 phosphoglycerate right from this 3 phosphoglycerate they will produce 2 phosphoglycerate from the 2 phosphoglycerate they will produce phosphoenol pyruvate remember the common glycolysis pathway and phosphoenol pyruvate they will produce pyruvate that's the destination and and during these different stages they require they produce atp actually you know from 1 3 bpg they produce an atp there and from also uh, converting it into into this pyruvate in this case they also produces atp because you know phosphoenol pyruvate 1 3 bpg this phosphorylated contents are hugely uh, and they they actually have massive energy inside and they produces atp so rest of the process remains the same but the important step is this thing that conversion of glucose 6 phosphate into 6 phosphoglucone or delta lactone and then 6 phosphogluconate then final conversion of 6 phosphogluconate into kdpg right so these are a uh, kind of uh, basic overview of entner dough drop pathway and i hope that's helpful thank you